the title of this message is dwelling in the land of promises dwelling in the land of promises most people want to know how 2017 will be like it will be a year of dwelling in the land of promises as heaven opens up like never before to hear your praises amen we went to deuteronomy chapter 26 and verses 1 to 11 and we learned about how important it was for the israelites to do something once they entered the promised land god wanted them to say something before they brought the first fruit offering and offered it to them or offered it to him he never considered it as redundant he never considered it as repetitive most often we say that's a repetitious prayer and we try to push away some of these biblical things that are taught by god but it's time for us to understand if that if god was the originator of the prayer or if god was the originator of the confession nothing is repetitive can i have an amen, amen. and the more you say it the more you're going to see power released over the seed you sow amen amen now we're going to move on because we have limited time during this week of prayer and i believe that i would like to deliver what god has put into my spirit to you for you will see these things happen in 2017 now i told you about the unusual thing that joshua did in chapter 2 and verse 1 he was one of the two original spies among the 12 whom moses had sent already to check out the promised land Now in Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1 you see him doing an unusual thing he decides to send two spies to spy out Jericho and we're going to learn in detail why this had to be done but i told you that he had seen two principles operating in the life of Moses that he was trying to follow and i wanted to write this down if you were not here yesterday the first principle is that he knew that you cannot lead a people into anything that they don't have a vision for i believe this church is in the process of having leaders emerge and unless you understand these principles well it is a struggle when you're dealing with people sometimes you're trying to communicate something to people under you and you're wondering why on earth this man or this woman has a mental block the problem is not the mental block the problem is how clear are you in communicating the vision to that person because you can never lead a people into anything that they don't have a vision for that's the first principle you must understand you don't have to go to management class to learn this you just have to be in the word and god will teach you every single principle that will make you a success can i have an amen proper amen please now number 2 the second principle is that god wanted something for them that he wants to do in your life as well and the thing he wants to see happen was he knew that unless you are excited about your destiny that means you must be excited about what god has in store for you you can never endure the process that brings you into promise that's a very very powerful statement you can never endure the process that brings you into promise promise will not just happen because somebody lays hands on you and prophesies that's the most childish way of understanding prophecy prophecy never happens that way there is a process that happens before god's promises begins to manifest and god wants people growing up He wants people understanding the way he operates. And knowing this, the Bible tells us in Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1 that Joshua sent out two spies to spy out Jericho and to bring back a report. If you have your Bibles with you, I'd like you to turn with me please to Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1 And Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly saying Go 
view the land. Circle the word view and write close to that vision. Even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. I told you something that I don't mind repeating again this morning. God had arranged a hiding place for these two great men in the city of Jericho in the most unusual place, a harlot's house. Circle the word, lodged there. The hiding place, the covering protection of the home of the harlot was a place which was in Hebrew described as a setter. A place that would be a covering protection for them. A hiding place. And I believe that many of you, not all of you, many of you have been selected by God to be a hiding place, a secret keeper and a burden bearer. You heard a testimony of how when you share the word, the word begins to bring or elicit responses, testimonies. Can I have an amen? When people come to you with problems, they have been beaten, they have been abused, they have been taken for a big ride by wicked men and wicked women. They have no place to go to. God establishes you to be a hiding place. Not for you to take the stone and stone them. That's not the purpose of the church. I don't know whether you're listening. No, you're not listening. If this church is listening, I want the listening people to say an amen. amen. God wants you to know what to do. And remember, your house, please write this down. Your house, your presence, that means when they see you, they know that they can trust you, they can run into you, and they cannot be judged, but loved, put back on their feet, and made to do something good in life. Your house, your presence, and who you are, has become a heaven for greatness to be protected by those who are abused, neglected, drunk, torn, and despised by men. There are plenty of these people in this world, believe me. They have no place to go to. You heard one testimony this morning. Loneliness. Loneliness makes people do crazy stuff. You don't know. Most people think they are lonely. You don't understand loneliness one bit. Loneliness is such that you can sit in company and still feel so miserable. Everybody is laughing. Everybody is talking. Everybody is doing things. But in the inside of you, you are dying. And you don't know what to do. And you don't know how to express that. And you will think of sister so and so, brother so and so. And you see them speaking the word. And you trust them and you think, maybe I can go to them for comfort. And if you turn around and judge them. And you curse them. And you keep them away in arm's length. My friends, you are not portraying the God who went to the cross. You are portraying a different type of a God to these people. And these people, they have tried everything out. They have tried drugs. They have tried running around with the crazy gang. They have tried everything, but still are tormented by loneliness. What are you going to do about it? Listen, there are four lessons that I told you that I'm going to share with you this morning that are transferable truths. That means not only will it work for me, it will work for you. It will work for anybody you share these truths with. Amen. Can I have an amen? It's time you grew up. It's time you started changing. There is no more time for you to wait and be the same old person you were maybe 10 years back, 15 years back, 20 years back, and you think it's something big for you to make a statement, I never change. My friend, you're making the biggest mistake possible. The day you say I never change, you started to die. 
four lessons which are transferable truths from this particular text that I'm going to share with you so that you will understand them well. Joshua chapter 2. Number one, the first truth. Joshua chapter 2 and verse 1. Positioning. Positioning. Remember, Rahab's house wasn't in a bank. Her house wasn't in a fortress. It wasn't a safe house of the city either. Sometimes you have safe houses guarded by people. No one can just go in and come out. Hers was an open house. First thing, write the word open house. And it was positioned on the walls of Jericho. I want you to understand the importance of this word positioning. The reason I don't want you to bemoan the tears, the storms, the trials, the testings, the betrayals, the abuse, the improprieties that you have had to endure in the past. Because God used them to position you rightly. Just imagine a woman selling her body every day, not realizing that God's destiny was far greater. I don't know whether you're listening. God's destiny was greater. That's another testimony we heard. The government doesn't have answers. No, you're not listening. They don't have answers. We who follow God have answers. We follow the light of God's word. We have the revelation giver inside of us. We have answers that the world doesn't have answers for. They are limited and they don't like to Acknowledge their limitations. You serve a God who has no limitations. No limitations whatsoever. Here is a woman. She didn't like it. But there are times when we are abused so much. That sometimes we take our eyes off God. Who is actually using all of it. To make up the sum total of you who will be used by him. So God positions you in a strat strategic place for a strategic time. Mark that down please. Put an asterisk or whatever in your notebook when you're writing these things. And understand it's not just to be marked in a notebook and the notebook thrown away. It's for life. God has kept you in that particular place for a particular time, for a particular season. It doesn't matter how many people have abused you, how many people have walked over you, how much of trials you have had to go through, how many silent tears you have cried. Remember, it was for a positioning that all those things happened. Amen. God lets you build a house on the wall to relocate you from where you were to where you are right now. Remember, she was on the edge of the city. Mark that down, please. Just write those words. Edge of the city. Some of you are living on the edge. And you don't know what's going to happen next. Thank God. That's the position God wants you to be in. Amen. 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 Do not despise the wind that blew you and that tormented you in the past. Sometimes people live so much in their past that they're never able to see the future God has in store for them. That's why I keep telling you, your end is not the wilderness. Your end is not the past. It's not Mara. It's not in the wilderness. It's way ahead. Amen. Do not despise the force that took you and used to toss you around like a rag doll. From pillar to post, 
not knowing where to go, not knowing where to turn, not knowing who to speak to. I want you to rejoice in the fact that you're in the right place at the right time to do the thing that God has called you to do. The destiny of this woman was about to change. But for that, the positioning had to be right. I don't know whether you're listening. Many of you have been through a shift. I want you to write this down. Because sometimes you don't understand when there is a shift, when there is a change, when there is a move that is slightly unfamiliar. The shift is, I'm going to explain what. You can put number one, number two, number three, number four when you're writing so you understand them. And if you're in one of those type of shifts, understand it's God who's done it. And he is in charge of everything that's happening in your life. Number one, things you thought wouldn't have moved moved. You thought it's immovable. They won't move. This thing will be status quo. Suddenly it moved. People you thought wouldn't leave got up and walked away from your life. Jobs you thought you would always have shook out from under your reach. That means you always thought you will have this job. Somewhere you lost it. It is as though a storm blew through your life and everything is chaotic. Everything shaken. Everything looking uprooted. You know what a storm is? We have seen one and it's fresh in our memory. Write the word uprooted. You must know That God has a strategy to position you and it took every wind, every storm in life and every attack. Why? Every critic and hater of you to push you to a place of positioning for divine purpose like you are right now. Even the ones who hated you didn't know that they were the instrument that God permitted to be used to get you to where you are. You wouldn't have started praying if not for them. You wouldn't have started seeking after truth if not for that condition. You wouldn't have been where God has placed you right now, positioned you, if it was not for that situation and storm in your life. Rahab's house was positioned right. It was the last stop before crossing over. The harlot's house was on the wall. Some of you are not yet positioned. I want you to write that as well. This is not just a message for those who are positioned. This is a message for those who are wandering and wandering still. It's time you left the wilderness and became a city dweller. Wilderness wandering is not biblical lifestyle for believers all their life it is to enter the land of promise it is to live in the land of promise it is to grow and to do things in the land of promise amen that's god's plan and purpose to those who are not at position the problem is not with god you are frightened and scared and you fight him every day constantly fighting his plans is delaying the season. And God wants you to understand that this is the season for you to enter in. Not stand on the wall. Not stand back and watch. Not sit on the fence. Get in. Can I have an amen? Move when he says move. We are going to learn from this harlot. This is a time when your life must come into alignment. So that you can be positioned correctly for divine purpose. No more, no more delays. Because the time is short. So what should you do? You have to open up 
to what God is doing right now in your life. Be willing to be positioned rightly. For that you have to have a right attitude. Your mind has to be clear. Your mind has to be the mind of Christ. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. And the wisdom of God is formed within us. You look at confused people. Why are they confused? Because they don't have the mind of Christ. That means they don't have a mind that is continually word dominated. It's more world dominated. So there's confusion in the world. They're confused in their mind as well. You look at a man who's having his mind filled with the word of God. That man is a different man. That woman is a different person. Please write this down. Unless you have the right attitude, you will not get into the right position and you won't have your miracle. I'm going to give you an example. Biblical example. You must have the right attitude. You must have the right position for you to have your miracle come your way. Remember, if the harlot's house was inside the city and not on the wall, she wouldn't have been the choice for these spies to dwell in. They wouldn't have lodged in her house because the entire city had been alerted of these spies and they had to find a hiding place. They had to be close to where they could get back with news to Joshua. You must understand your divine destiny. Your divine destiny is not in playing safe. It is being in the center of God's will. Please write that down. I'm going to write it myself. Your divine destiny is not in playing safe. Any fool can play safe. But in being in the center of God's divine plan. Some people have played games with their destiny so much. They only can play safe. They don't know that people who take care never take charge. No, you're not listening. If you're always taking care, you never take charge. Playing safe is not what will take you into your divine destiny. Being in the center of God's will. If you ask me, the harlot's house was in the center of God's will, but not in the center of Jericho. I don't know whether you're listening. I want you to write it down. I'm writing. If I can write, you can write. You're not that big that you cannot write. Bring a pen, bring a paper, write it down. You must know your destiny. You must know your call. You must have God's word with you. And say, God, I believe it. I believe what you're saying. I believe and I want to see this happen in my life. Divine destiny happens when you're in God's Divine plan in the center of the plan. Rahab's house was in the center of God's plan. But not in the center of Jericho. Can I have an amen? amen. Hallelujah. How many of you are seeing something this morning? Hallelujah. There are certain changes that you must effect in your life. Do it. Do it. Some of you are not making the changes. So you are seeing the seasons of life passing you by. And you are thinking that's how God operates. No. God wants you to be in the center of his will. Remember the house was not in the center of the city. The house was on the wall. But in the plan of God, it was in the center. Remember, there is always a calm in the eye of the storm. The storm may be around you, but in the eye, 
of the storm there is a hiding place. Amen. Now I'm going to give you an example. Why you have to be in the right place at the right time. And that example is from Matthew's Gospel chapter 9. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 9, and verses 20 and 21 and 22. And behold, a woman which was deceased with an issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about and when he saw her, he said, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith had made you whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. Amazingly, there are three gospel writers who even though they knew that this woman had a disease, called the disease an issue. How many of you have issues this morning? No, you're not listening to me. Matthew, Mark, and Dr. Luke never called what she had disease an issue. I have an issue with so and so. That's how people speak. I have an issue with you. You even call a child an issue. Can I have an amen? Matthew chapter 9. This disease that the woman had was called an issue. Circle the word issue. Do you have issues? God has answers. Amen. Amen. Till now, if you read the Gospels, you will understand how Jesus healed. Always Jesus is seen extending himself to people. When the leper came and said, Lord, if it is your will, he said, my will, be healed. And he stretched out his hand, touched the leper, leper was healed. Every time you see Jesus, he is extending himself. But for the first time, and if there's a first time, there can be a second time. There can be a third time. There can be a fourth time. And there can be a fifth time. For the first time, a woman, thank God for women. Hallelujah. And here women. Thanking God for women. Thank God for women of faith. For the first time, a woman extended herself. Till now, Jesus extended himself. This was the first time a woman got her miracle when she positioned herself correctly. And I'm going to talk to you about the positioning she made. She wanted, according to this particular place, to touch, and I want you to circle that word, the hem of his garment. Hem. The word hem is the Greek word kraspedon. Kraspedon. K-R-A-S-P-E-D-O-N. Kraspedon. In some translations you will read the word border. She wanted to touch the border of his garment. Why did she want to touch the border of his garment? Remember, this is a woman who is a Jewish woman. She was well versed in the scriptures. She knew the scriptures promised her that when the Messiah comes in Malachi chapter 4 verses 2 and 3. That there would be healing virtue that would flow from his being. The word there is, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. The word wings was talking about the tassels on the Jewish prayer shawl called the talit. T-A-L-L-I-T-H, talit. The tassels or the 
those threads. She knew the scriptures. She knew that the Messiah would be having healing in his wings. We are not talking about literal wings. We are talking about how the Jewish shawls ends were called wings. She knew it. But the good news was very rarely understood by most people. She was willing to get out from the end of her border of disease and hopelessness and move into the edge of his border of healing and hope. Are you willing to break free? Remember for her, comfort zone was in the house. But when she broke free from her border and entered his border, the first word he said was, be of good comfort. How many of you want good success? God wants you to have good comfort, not bad comfort. Some want to live comfortable lives. Sadly, that's not at all in God's plan. His plan is good comfort. No, he don't like it. Only Brother Dharma seems to like it. Good comfort. Not just comfort. You read Joshua. He didn't say you will have victory. He didn't say you will have just some kind of success. Good success. He's a good God. So when he brings things, it is always good. Be of good comfort. Write it down please. She was willing to get out from the end of her border. Her border of disease, hopelessness and issues. Write the word issue also there. Because it's a biblical word. And move into the edge of... Of his border of healing and hope. She had to press out of her comfort zone. Which was her home. So that the miracle she wanted could happen. Now I'm going to make a statement. I'd like you to write it. I'm going to explain it a little later. It takes courage my friends to be successful. It takes courage to be successful. It takes courage to win. People don't talk about people who don't win. But they always gossip about those who are successful. And most people don't like that and so they shun away from good success. They don't want the heat. You must understand, God wants you to win. And if you win... You are going to be talked about by people. That's the package deal. Amen. Don't tell me. Today there is a religious crowd. Are not going to sit and attack those two men who went to the harlot's house. I am sure I can guarantee there are people who will take that verse and do evil. Because they are just out to find fault with somebody. But if you are wanting to be a success, if you are wanting to be a victorious person, you must understand people don't like victorious people. I'm going to tell you why. Why? Because mediocre living and average thinking has seeped into the church. They don't think and even understand how big their God is. They think he's smaller than the street and deity. They don't know how big and magnificent he is. So mediocre living, average thinking has reduced people in the church to mere gossip. They see somebody successful, you have dime a dozen critics. Write down those two words, mediocre living and average thinking. Two words. The moment you are successful, they gossip. They don't understand you can be as successful as you ought to be. Because your God has never failed. How can you... See, listen. 
show me your God and I will tell you who you are. It's the right principle. If you worship a God who is angry, you will be an angry man. If you worship a God of love, you will be a loving person. If you worship a God who is healer, you will heal. If you worship a God who is named after a sickness, don't be surprised when the sickness comes knocking on your door. Show me your God and I will tell you who you are. If your God is a compassionate God, a God of great mercy, a God who saves the sinner and sets the captives free. We sang that beautiful song early. My soul escaped like a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. If that's your God, then you will help people escape from the shackles of sin. You will be a person whom God will use. So I want you to have courage in 2017. You have to have some kind of guts to handle 2017. Because unless you want defeat, unless you are waiting for failure, 2017 is going to catapult you. And you have to be ready for the critics and the haters and so many others who will be loosed. The problem is, write this down please. You must have the courage to stand in the place where God wants you to be. Though the storms keep raging and the critics keep talking. And you have the grace to say, I have come too far to turn around and get back to Egypt. Because the kingdom of God suffereth violence. It is the violent, you, who taketh it by force. I have come too far. Don't we sing that song? He brought me out this far to take me into the promised land. Amen. After you cross the Red Sea and you come into the wilderness and somebody is criticizing you because your shoe is not growing old. I don't know if you're listening. Somebody is criticizing you because your clothes look so nice in the wilderness. You have to have the courage to say, I cannot get back to Egypt to please you. Amen. Proper amen. amen. The devil is watching you, my friends. He is watching a reaction. He wants you back in Egypt. He wants to kill you. He doesn't like what you are listening to. He plans your defeat every day, by day and night. Your God is planning your victory and he's trying to tell you what it is. You've got to have the courage to say, yes, I want that. Not what the devil wants me to have. I will not go back to Egypt. I have come so far that I'm not going to go back again. So what if they criticize me because my clothes are not worn out? Because it is not bleached. Remember, that's what the miracle was in the wilderness. The shoes didn't wear out. No, you're not listening. The shoes didn't wear out. The clothes knew. So new and nice. There was plenty in the camp. There was silver and gold in the camp. There was health and wholesomeness in the camp. God is talking about a new year of outpouring. How can... The new year be any less than anything he has done in all the past years that you have known him. God is not running short of ideas, my friends. It's up to you to learn to go with courage into the future. Amen. It takes courage to enter Canaan. It takes courage to live in Canaan. I want you to write this down, please. The second, second principle. From this text that we are going to learn, just put number two, come back tomorrow. Amen. Come back tomorrow. You will hear things that will bless you. Believe me, I'm not joking. When I talk to you, I talk to you a word that I know I will have to live out in my life. It's not going to be easy. It will never be easy. 
That's why I told you, if you're just listening to all this wrong talk by some person who preaches cheap grace, forget it. They are not the people you need to be listening to. Listen to men of God. Every man of God who walks with God knows every year is filled with trials and testings. They will give you the right word. They will alert you to rhema words from heaven. They will correctly put you on the path of victory. They can be men, they can be women, but they will have the word of the Lord for you. And if you are listening to some cheap person who is going to be giving you cheap grace and trying to stir you up into believing cheap things and then you are facing the storm and you don't know what to do. You are in a big mess. Not because the storm can blow you off. It's because you listened to the wrong advice. You listened to the wrong counsel. You didn't listen to God. God prepares you to enter into the promised land. Can I have an amen? Did you ever once hear God say there won't be annex? He never once said there will be no giants in the land. He only said it's a land of milk and honey. The rest was up to the people to clear out. Are you listening? We are expecting him to say there won't be giants. We'll take care of the honey and the milk. He doesn't talk about that. He talks about the milk and the honey. The annex, you deal with them. I have given you the land. That's how 2017 will be. You have to deal with some people. You have to deal with some demons. You have to deal with some circumstances. But one thing you can be assured. If you are doing it correctly, they will not be able to stand before you. Like he told Joshua, nobody will be able to stand before you. Can I have an amen? You are that kind of a victor. That's the kind of blessing God has given you, my friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The second thing we will learn tomorrow. But right now we are going to spend some time in prayer. I value your time. I know that God has given you the grace to be here with us. Many of you have taken permission from your work just to be here this morning. To spend time with God in prayer. And I believe that that should never be go in vain. Amen. Can I have an amen, please? Let's spend some time in worship before we actually start praying. Hallelujah. Just put away your notes quickly, please. And let's lift up your voices together. Lift up your voices to him.